Hello my friends, welcome back to my channel and welcome to my kitchen. Today we are going to talk about different products that I use on a day-to-day -day basis to help me through my everyday life with CMT. Now, what you're probably expecting is a video all about these super special and exotic products that are only available to people with disability, but that is not what you're going to see here today. Today I am showing you everyday products, things you can get on Amazon or in Target, things that are available to everybody and used by everybody, but I find that they make my life a lot easier by being in my home. I don't actually need a whole lot of real handicapped adaptable equipment in my life. I actually, other than my braces, don't have any handicap specific adaptive equipment in my life at this current time of age, almost 34. What does my life hold down the road? I have absolutely no idea, but all I can share with you is what I know as of my life right now. Nothing is crazy adaptive, but I have a lot of products that help me adapt even though they are available in conventional stores and online. So today I wanted to share with you, be you somebody who is a fellow CMTer like me, or if you're just somebody who's curious to know how I get along day to day, this video is for you. I'm going to share with you all of my favorite things in three different rooms of my house. The bathroom, the bedroom, and of course, the kitchen. Here we go. All right, the first stop on the tour is my bathroom. Welcome to my bathroom, you guys. Something I never really thought I would say to you all on YouTube, but alas, here we are. Welcome to my bathroom. There are a handful of things, three to be exact, hanging out in my shower, which has in no way or shape been cleaned in the last two weeks, so I apologize for that. Real life, I'm being real with y'all, being real with y'all, because this is actually a really good point. I cannot do the deep, heavy scrubbing, right? Because I lack tricep strength, which means I cannot do the push motion when it comes to pushing down on things. Therefore, while I do do the everyday cleaning, dusting, cooking, scrubbing, mopping, vacuuming, laundry, all of those things, I do the general upkeep of the house. When it comes to the need for a deep clean, like say in the shower, that's my husband's realm of expertise because he's the one who has the strength to back up the scrub necessary to do things like the shower. So apologies for that, but that's actually a very relevant CMT topic. But I wanted to show you guys the three things that I have in my shower and why they are adaptive. Now, like I said earlier in this intro, these products are products that are just readily available. They're not necessarily geared towards people with disability, but they work very, very well for me. The first thing I want to share with you is this little guy right here. This is a silicone head scrubber. It's a head massager, but what I use it for is to get the shampoo deep down into my scalp. My hands are so weak that when you need to like really scrub, 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 like if you're using anti-dandruff shampoo, which is something I struggle with hardcore, especially in the winter, I need anti-dandruff shampoo. You need to get it onto your scalp, right? And my fingers, I'm just not convinced, do a good enough job on their own. Enter this thing. With this, I can put my hand to my head and I can push down using my entire strength and not my hands. You see how my wrist gives out, my hands are doing nothing and I can scrub my scalp. This thing I think was like 12 or $13 on amazon.com. If I can find it, I'll link it down below for you. I got it, I asked for it for Christmas because my mother-in-law always wants silly little um, stocking stuffers. And so this was one of the things I asked for and I'm so glad I did because my scalp has never been healthier and never been cleaner thanks to this bad boy right here. The next item worth mentioning is this stool. This is a stool that was like $30 on bedbathandbeyond.com and it's so good that I requested that there be one in the shower that I use in my in-laws place as well because the truth is I have a very hard time shaving. So what happens is instead of having to bend all the way down, which is so stinking tiring, my legs want to give out, all that jazz, this allows me to pop my leg up there, and oh, look at how easy shaving is now. It's so, so great. It was like 30 or $40, and it's absolutely worth every single penny. It's a great, great stool. The last item I'm taking you in the shower for, because it is this shower head right here. This shower head, as you will notice, I actually have in two different places. The real place that the shower head belongs is 
up there. Oh, it doesn't even tilt that. There it is. That's the regular place the shower head goes, right? Up high. I like to be able to pull down my shower head to be able to rinse my body more efficiently or avoid getting my hair wet. So when I got this, it was game changing and here's why. So the shower head is by Moen and it is called, can you see? No, you can't, you can barely see that because it's reflective. It says magnetics on here. This is a magnetic shower head, you guys. Look at this. How cool is that? So why is this awesome for me with my disability? Because I can't reach my arms up over my head, which means that I don't have to work as hard to try and put the thing back up there when I want to. This is very strange, I'm well aware, but I have to put my arms together to get over my head. Easy peasy. As long as I can grab it, I can pull it down. I can put it back up, I can pull it down. Down is no problem, my arm falls naturally. Up, down, stuck. The coolest accidental find in my bathroom. So those were the three finds in my bathroom. If I do say so myself, the magnetic shower head thing is the coolest thing. Just something of note, the shower head comes with the regular shower head piece. That extra magnet right there was like $15 extra, worth it. Worth it to keep my hair from getting wet on non washing days. Am I right, ladies? Of course. Shall we move on to a different part of the house? All right, so the next stop on our tour of my adaptive house is the bedroom. No, there's nothing saucy that I'm about to show you guys, but this is actually just the place where I'm going to show you a handful of things that are, again, not necessarily adaptive things, but things that are everyday products that I use because of symptoms of my CMT. The first one is probably the most awkward, but this is the one that is the most important, and that is my sports bras. You guys, Sports bras are a bear to begin with. Now imagine trying to put on a sports bra when you don't have any arm muscles. Like, whoever designed sports bras are cruel, cruel human beings. And I would love if anybody who is in the fashion industry is watching this and wants to collaborate with me on a disability-friendly line of activewear and lingerie, you reach out to me because I am here for that idea. Because sports bras are absolutely the worst. This is a C9 from Target sports bra, which I don't think is available anymore. Their new line is called All In Motion, but this is why the sports bra is important. I can only wear sports bras that clip like real bras. What do I mean by that? I mean that once it is clipped, it looks like this. There is absolutely no necessary reason to put it on over your head. I can put it on like a normal sports bra. And the way I put on normal bras are is just as awkward. I actually have to flip it around. So I put the cups in the back so I can pull the strap forward. Then I hook the strap here, shimmy my way around until the cups are here, and then I flip them up over the girls because I don't have the strength to pull back and actually hook or unhook the bra from the back either. So I have to put my bras on backwards and then flip them around. When you have to put a bra on over your head, you don't have that option. So now there are bras that are like, oh yeah, we have the clip in the back, but we also have it joined here so you have to put it over your head anyway, which is stupid and I hate it. If anybody in this world knows where there's a current line of sports bras that open and close just like regular bras, bonus if they're cute, um, let me know because I know Calia by Carrie Underwood has one, or at least they used to, and I think in the most boring colors possible, I think the new Target line released a couple of them, but we're talking like one gray, one navy, and one black. Like, nothing exciting. But my sports bras, I'm very, very specific about because I can't use 95% of the sports bras out there. Another product that I own solely because I'm always freezing. That is one of the symptoms that I have that I deal with all the time, regularly freezing. Today, it was only 45 degrees outside, is it? 45 exactly right now. And I'm chilly in this tank top. And from here down, I can actually feel, and I'm warm to the touch here. Right about here, I start to change. And going down, I'm frozen by the time I get to my hands. My feet are the same. So I own wool socks. These are by Bombas. These are the Merino, Merino wool? I think that's what it's called. These are exceptional. They're wonderful. Ankle length ones, calf length ones, 
They're absolutely fantastic. And I swear to you, I promise you, they actually keep your feet warmer than regular socks. It's amazing. So I thought these were worth mentioning because they really, really do work. So my friends with very cold feet, these might be worth looking into. They are on the pricey side, but they're worth it. Going along with the sock trend, because your girl has freezing feet, I also have feet that are convinced, wholeheartedly convinced, the argument between my brain and my feet is as follows. Feet, I am not cold, I am a regular temperature. Brain, you are freezing every day. True story, I used to be the girl that could not sleep with socks on. I hated the way socks made my feet feel. I felt constrained. I would wake up with pain in my toes all because of sleeping in socks if I accidentally fell asleep with them. Flashback to about two or so years ago of switch flipped and now it is literally impossible for me to sleep without socks on. For whatever reason, even if I am warm to the touch, which I did not realize until my husband touched my legs one day and he was like, babe, you are boiling up. You are totally, like, you're warm. And I'm like, but my brain says my feet are cold. All I feel in my, cold, in my feet is frozen. So I am now the queen of all the slipper socks. All the slipper socks. I must have at least eight or nine pairs of slipper socks. Some that I have worn holes through because I use them so much. These are some of my winter pairs. Sherpa lined goes up past the ankle. We have Sherpa lined and like sweater material that goes up past the calf. We have sweater socks that literally go thigh high height. I have slipper socks ranging from everything in between. Slipper socks are an essential everyday item, but something I literally cannot live without because I can't sleep. Sidebar, grace and lace leg warmers fall under that category as well. One other thing worth mentioning is my New Balance shoes. These come in, I think, double, double wides. Of course, the label is completely worn off because of the way I walk in these, but these are the shoes that house my AFOs, my braces, as you can see. The AFO itself comes all the way through here and covers the entire shoe, and this is what helps me walk easier and avoid tripping over my own feet. The shoes are not custom. They're just New Balance, but I go to the store and buy like the double wide. These are a 10 double wide. My shoes are, my normal shoes are a size nine. So I have to go up and wider in order to accommodate these braces, but thankfully they are regular commercial shoes that exist that can do that for me, which is wonderful. I usually have to go to a specialty shoe store, but they at least exist without having to custom order them. And then the last thing I'm going to share with you guys is actually a product. And this is something that again is on the market for everybody, but works really, really great for me. This is magnesium lotion. And it seems like it would be such an odd thing to tell you guys about, however, Magnesium is best absorbed through our skin. People take it in supplements, we get it in food, but the best way to get it is through our skin. And I have found that this not only helps me sleep like a dream, but it actually helps my muscle aches and sometimes even my nerve pain. I'm not joking. Now, if you are a fellow CMT -er or somebody with nerve pain and this doesn't help you because you are in extreme pain, I'm sorry. But for me, who doesn't suffer from pain all that often or all that intensely, this is an incredible, incredible product. And it's not expensive either. It's like $9 a bottle, and a bottle lasts a really, really long time. I just take a little bit. I will rub it on my calves because I often get spasms in my calves. I'll rub it in my calves before I go to bed every night. Or I will rub it on the back of my neck here because this is where I'm often the most tense, in my neck and in my shoulders. And I'll be darned if this stuff doesn't help tremendously. So I use it for symptoms of my CMT, but actually it would work great for anybody who needs a little extra muscle relaxation, help with sleep, or magnesium supplementation. Hashtag not sponsored, I swear. All right, shall we go to the last place in the house where I'm gonna show you adaptive product, which is of course where I spend a lot of my time, the kitchen. All right, welcome to the most used room in my house by me as the homemaker, as the domestic goddess. I'm always in the kitchen. I'm always cooking or cleaning the kitchen in some way, shape, or form. And so I have quite a few things in here that, again, are normal tools. None of them are really came from a, this is for a disabled person mindset, 
but all of these tools are so incredibly helpful and very, very important in order for me to be able to do my job creating food for my husband and myself. So a couple of things of note. First, and I can't even, like, I can show you some B-roll or whatever, but crucial component is how the kitchen is set up. Anything that I am going to use is exclusively on the first two shelves. Anything above that, I cannot reach because I cannot reach my hands above my head. If I wanted to reach, I have to do this. I'm gonna block my face and you see my setup, I have to use one hand to reach the other, or to help the other reach. And because of that, me reaching for anything that might be breakable is actually a really, really bad idea. Therefore, everything that is within my grasp happens to be on the first two shelves. Kitchen setup is super, super important. Another thing of note, one of the tools that I find very, very essential in my kitchen specifically is a KitchenAid mixer. I know this is kind Kind of a rite of passage when you are getting your own home for the first time or when you are getting married on your wedding registry and we did in fact use wedding money to purchase our kitchen aid mixer and I love it. Big thing though, ours lives in the corner. We do not hide it underneath a cabinet or hide it in our basement because it is completely impractical for me to lift that thing every time I want to use it. So all I do is store it in the corner. It's not great, but it gets the job done in terms of looks and then I can just pull it out and push it back into its position and use it without having to haul it every single time. The next thing I want to talk about is our choice in dishware. We are exclusively a Corel family. Why? Because Corel products, in theory, will not break if they fall to the floor. And with my CMT hands, things just jump out of my hands on a moment's notice, you know? Luckily, knock on wood, which I can't even find, it's over here somewhere, I have not actually dropped a plate of food yet, but things, you know, clink and clank and whatever, so we have Corel stuff all the time. We have a complete Corel set, dinner plates, salad plates, bowls, and see what I mean? And I even bought little dessert plates and little itty bitty bowls for my weight loss purposes of like little dessert plate and little ice cream bowl and things like that all in Corel because Corel is the safest brand for me to have around. As I'm talking, I wanna make this abundantly clear. None of this is sponsored. None of it. None of these companies know that I'm making any video like this. The next product worth mentioning are these OXO containers. Why? No twisting, no pulling. All you gotta do is push the button. Greatest thing ever. And you guys know this. I'm sure a bunch of you have these containers in your kitchen. Bet you didn't think about how easy and how wonderful these would be for somebody with really weak hands. Another absolute kitchen essential is an electric can opener because we all know those manual can openers are crap. They're really, really hard to use. You can't squeeze them. And even people that can use them have a hard time using them sometimes. An electric one takes all of the guesswork out of it, all of the work work out of it. This one is by Hamilton Beach. We got it from my grandfather at my bridal shower, which by the way, I have been married for six years. So that gives you a sense of like how long I've been using all of these products. But I use this all the time, all the time, whenever I'm using cans because I can't use anything else. See, I can't hold on to things. This next thing is gonna change your life, my friends in the kitchen. This was $20 or less than $20 on Amazon. It is a vegetable chopper, a vegetable dicer, and it is so much less work than actually dicing your vegetables yourself. I like to make chili, I like to use onions and peppers. I cannot for the life of me, even with the knives I haven't talked about yet, I can't for the life of me, I, I don't have the dexterity or the strength to be able to meticulously dice vegetables. It's just not in the cards for me, which is a bummer because I really like to cook, but it is what it is. You gotta work with what you got, right? This thing came into my life most recently of everything on the table, and it's amazing. All I gotta do now is chop my onions into bigger chunks. You put them on here, and you close it. Now, full transparency, in order for me to close it, I have to actually lean my elbows on it because, again, I can't push anything, but it gets the job done, and then all of the stuff collects in here, you dump it out. The one con to this is it does come apart, but it is incredibly difficult to get apart. My husband hates it because he has to clean it because you can remove it right here. I can't figure out how to get it open. So 
you can clean it by like sticking a thing in there and cleaning it. But if you want a more thorough cleaning, you need to take it apart and that's a little bit difficult. But the act of using this, very, very easy. It was, like I said, less than $20 and an absolute kitchen game changer. Are you ready for my craziest one, but one that I'm so very glad that I have? <gasps> Look at this little guy. Do you see how cute he is? This was actually a gift from my aunt's best friend, who was basically a second aunt to me. Um, when my husband and I went to go live in Japan for a while, she got us a little, couple Japanese themed gifts. What this is, you guys, is a chopstick helper. So you stick your chopsticks in the little guy's legs, and then magically, people who can't hold chopsticks, I'm trying to see if I have something here. People that, no. Ugh. People that can't hold chopsticks can magically use chopsticks. Is it perfect? No, my chopstick skills are still very, 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 very bad, but I literally cannot hold chopsticks without the help of this guy, and I cannot squeeze them or move my hands around without the help of this little guy here. I have learned that there are like cheater chopstick holders that don't involve a little happy man on them, but you better believe that I had this little happy man in my purse the whole time I was in Japan. And I bring him with me when I remember if we ever go out for sushi. This guy is remarkable. I will have a link down below to some of the more conventional chopstick helpers because I don't know where she got this guy, but having a chopstick helper is very, very helpful. All right, the last two things I wanna talk about are probably the most valuable things in my kitchen. One in terms of actual monetary value and the other in terms of use and necessity. So let's go with the necessity one first. This, ladies and gentlemen, is a jar opener, an adjustable jar opener by OXO. And I cannot tell you how many times since this thing entered my life, I have used it. I use it all the time. I actually, for a perfect example, went in the refrigerator to go and mix up the overnight oats that I made earlier so they could, you know, continue to blend and create their magic after stirring them a little bit more. And I realized I couldn't open the container. I, I, myself had somehow managed to screw it too tightly. And so instead of opening it right away, I set it aside so I could show you how this works. So when you can't open something, all you do is you take this and you slide it on to the jar and it stops. Ah, this is really hard to do. It stops when it hits the appropriate size and then you just use this to pull. Easy peasy, I use it on pickle jars, on pasta jars, on every, every jar, kombucha jars all the jars. Oh my goodness, this is very exciting. If you wanna know all about these, make sure you're subscribed to my channel because in my daily vlogs, I show you what I do to make these. So this thing, if I would have needed to pay $50 more for it, like I don't remember how much it cost, but it's not expensive. It's an OXO product. You can find something similar at Target worth every penny every single penny, I promise you that. Now the last thing I wanna talk about is the most indulgent thing that I have, but absolutely necessary. Years and years and years ago, I don't even know how long, when Cutco knives, I don't know if they first started or if, I, I don't know, I don't know where they came from, but I'm pretty sure they might be an MLM or some sort of something, and my mom's friend's son started selling them. So back when MLM people like went to one another's homes and did presentations and everything, this man came over selling Cutco knives and my life was forever changed. This is honestly a product that like a sales product worth picking up. Cutco knives are the sharpest knives and they are the only knives that I can use. Hand to God, only knives I can use. So much so, that we own these dinner, the regular old dinner steak knives that I use for literally everything. If my food doesn't fall apart when you look at it, I have to use one of these knives to cut it, not joking. But I use these so often that when I realized I'm gonna be regularly going to my in-laws in Florida, I brought one of my knives with and it permanently lives at their house solely for when I'm over there so I can use an actual knife 
with my food and in food preparation because I cannot use any other knives. My mom bought all of these cut cone knives, very, very expensive investment. But at the time, my father did most of the cooking and he also has CMT. And then knowing that they have this daughter with very weak hands who might want to be able to function in the kitchen on her own, they spent the money on these knives and I was actually able to use them. So when I got married, a hefty chunk of our wedding money went to investing in my own set of Cutco knives. We're talking $500 and that's not even paying for everything that you see down here. We have the big boy. I don't know the technical terms for these, but they're big boys. This is a knife that we didn't pay for, my parents did, and I stole it from them when I moved out of the house. Thank you, mom and dad, because, for not taking it back from me because I use this knife for literally everything. This is the knife I use more, than, oh, the only knives I use more than this one is the table knife, but this one literally chops all of my vegetables and is the reason that I can eat food and prep good food, this knife right here, because it's serrated and I shouldn't be doing that because they're very, very sharp, but this knife is incredible. They're all incredible and they're all sharp, but I function better with serrated ones. We have a meat trimmer that I use to clean all of my meat, paring knives, both big and small, to cut berries and fruit and all that jazz, and then my collection of dinner knives because I literally use them every single day, every day, not joking. And then Cutco also makes an ice cream scooper, which is actually very heavy. It is a heavy ice cream scooper, but the way that it is made, it melts the ice cream and actually makes scooping ice cream very easy. So even though it's heavy, it's easy to use, which I really like. So Cutco knives are so expensive, but so worth it. So if you are somebody who has problems with your hands, weakness with your hands, but you want to be able to cook and use knives in the kitchen, Cutco is definitely worth looking into. I love them, I will always love them. As long as the brand exists, I will be brand loyal. Doesn't matter the cost because they are worth it. They're absolutely worth it. So those are all of my little adaptive products that aren't actually marketed as adaptive products, but they help me tremendously in my day-to-day -day life. I really hope whether you are a fellow CMT or, or fellow invisible illness, chronic illness, whatever you wanna call it, person, this video helped you get some new ideas. And even if you're not, even if you have no disability to speak of, these products are still absolutely incredible and worth having in your home, I promise you that. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up because it really, really helps me out. And if you are interested in following along a little bit more with me and my life and my journey on through life, go ahead and click that little red subscribe button. I would love to have you as a part of the Deep in the Divine community. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch and for taking the time to learn a little bit more about life with Charcot Marie Tooth Disease. It means so much to me that people are actually taking the time to click on this video and either learn about my life experience to see if it's similar to your own or to learn simply because you've never heard of CMT before seeing me on YouTube. Whatever the case may be, thank you so much for taking the time to learn a little bit more about Charcot Marie Tooth Disease. It really does mean the world to me. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye! Thank you.